Alrighty, what's up guys? Uh, thanks for clicking on this video and um, if you're clicking on this video it means that you want to know more you haven't done or you just want to see it being done. A uh, rebuild, so um, I've never personally rebuilt a motor so uh, don't take this as a tutorial, more as just of what it looks like and like all the steps and stuff like just how I'm doing it so you know kind of how to do it. This is going to be a long video, as you can tell by the length. I'm just starting it, so I don't even know how long it's going to be. But um, right in front of me, I have my uh, rebuild kit, and I'm going to go ahead and show that to y'all. So in front of me is the rebuild kit for the 7M GE motor off of Partsology.com. It was like $260 to $280. I can't remember exactly, but it took two days to ship, and that's because I didn't order quick enough in the day to have it ship next day. They have very good shipping, and I do recommend them. And so in the regular rebuild kit, not the master one that comes with like the oil pump and stuff and everything, but in the regular rebuild kit, it comes with a full engine gasket set, and it is set in this box up above. And as you can see, it has every single engine gasket in there, like the oil pan head gaskets, all the seals and everything. And then in the box below is where all the important stuff is. Right here is the piston heads, so I'll show you how hot they look. So when you open up the box, it is very nicely packaged. You can see they all fold in together. And then, here is the piston head with the wrist pin separate, and so all I do is open the bag and drop the piston out, and as you can see, D&J, which is the brand, you can see the piston is very nice and clean. I have kind of dirty gloves on, but you can see it has valve relief and it looks really hot. So um, this should be a nice quality piston to be putting in the block, which I guess I'll find out after rebuilding it. And then you have the piston rings, all the set of piston rings and all the oil, whatever the things are called. Comes with new freeze plugs, which are those brass plugs that go in the block. You just use like a socket to hammer them in and out. Comes with all the engine bearings, yada yada, all the, I don't know, I can't think right now, but other than that though, like I said before, I have never rebuilt an engine, so please don't keep me liable. I'm just doing this and I'm recording it as I do it, like I do with most of my other videos of me just kind of winging it. Like with the turbo build, I had never done that before and it did come out successful, so um, bear with me as I go through this, but I will try to be documenting as much as possible just to show y'all because there are a few decent videos out there on how to you know, rebuild it and pull the engine and yada yada, but I, I did a lot of research and I couldn't find anything exactly like I'm going to show y'all. So hopefully what I'm showing y'all will be enough. I'm not going to be able to give you very good advice just because I haven't done it before, but I will try to be giving you the best advice I can. I did purchase the Haynes manual. I have a 92 Cressida, but they don't make a manual directly for the vehicle so I got one for a uh, 86 to 92 Celica Supra which in certain models they had the 7 MGE motor like the one in the Cressida so just the one little section of engine overhauling is all I needed and I did read the whole thing word for word the other night just to get in the facts and then I'm on a few forums where they gave me good advice so um, bear with me and let's go take some shit apart so this is going to be very time lapsey. It's going to be of me doing it, showing y'all me doing it, and then me telling y'all what you did because I don't want to be wasting a bunch of time just stopping and showing you what to do. So uh, pretty much what I've already done here is I took the intake off and set it right there. It's that thing. All it has is the one plug and the couple vacuum lines on it. Um, all of the throttle section, that big fat piece that goes on top. And then I need to put this to the side. That's the the vent and um, what I'm gonna do now is take the radiator out it's just got that thing there the um, other hose that goes in the bottom the two transmission cooler lines and then uh, I have mine has the electric fan so I got to unplug that take the radiator out it opens up a lot of space in the front of the engine and um, after that, then I'm going to work on the exhaust and everything else, but uh, let me go ahead and time-lapse y'all, so 
Uh, wish me luck. All right, so what I've done is I've disconnected all these connectors. There's one here, one here, the O2 sensor, one down there, 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 there. I don't know about y'all's, but mine is like broken. I think that's the coolant temp sensor uh, there. And then this goes all the way back and I'm gonna work on the wiring harness on that. I just did some of the top plugs. And then I disconnected the power steering. There's the one here I was able to just pull it off even with the hose clamp on and then the 17 millimeter whatever won't you come over to my we can do it what you like now I am on to the torque converter and what I'm doing to get that off technically you can do this before but I have a bolt there and a bolt there and whenever you try to break them loose it turns it over so what I have done I have a breaker bar on the harmonic balancer, it's a 19 millimeter, and then I have a pipe going over. This is the other handle to my jack, so you can take that off or use an exhaust pipe or something and it fits in really nice right there. And then whenever I need to crank it over, I just take the pipe off and then I push up on the bar, on the breaker bar and turn the motor over. But whenever I'm not, I just shove the pipe back in and it holds in a place so I can put the 14 millimeter socket on and break it loose just like that won't you come on to the crib? We can run and shoot and run and boo and all listen to it. Hey, L girl, why they always want to trip? Man, these bitches on at me and they won't get up on my shit. Hey, L girl, won't you come on to the crib? We can run and shoot and run and boo and all listen to it. Hey, L girl, why they always want to trip? Man, these bitches on my stuff and they won't get up on my shit. Hey, what I gotta do for a bad bitch? I got the trap all up on me. I got the pips all up on me. I got the green is all up on me. Slop, damn, damn, damn. Slop, damn. Cruising in the caddy, all my money coming tax me. Baddies always ready. I'm gonna pick you up at Levy. Cool it. Well, there you go, guys. I finally got the motor out. This video is about rebuilding it, and it took me this long just to pull the fucking motor out. And uh, one thing we can see both motor mounts are gone. Um, the torque converter looks like it's been replaced. You can see a number on it, and there are some paint marks, but um, oh, I'm kind of out of breath. I don't know if you could see in the clip, but I, I had to have the jack, I mean the engine hoist on the last hole because it was hitting the bumper. So I had it all the way out, and the jack is maxed out right now. And... The motor, the oil uh, pan sits low, so I literally had to lift it up and pull it over while pushing back on the hoist. But I am so glad we have it out. I can clean this nasty engine bay, see everything. This was the biggest pain in the ass that I've ever fucking done. So uh, shout out to old Toyotas for being bitches to work on. But other than that, I'm just going to... You know, first of all, I'm not going to put those transmission bolts back in those top two because they're fucking useless, but... Alright, so day four now. I'm just getting started. It's like five o'clock. But, um, you see I have the engine over here, and I went ahead and bought an engine stand because I couldn't find any of my friends that had one that was open. It's a thousand pounds, but it'll be enough. I wanted the lower one because it was like ten dollars cheaper. But, oh well, I have an engine stand, so I just got to put this together real quick and set it up on the stand, and then I can start cleaning it, disassembling it, yada yada, get it down to the stage it is supposed to be to be rebuilt. Now, it's time to turn this to this. Strolling, she pick up a phone, I text back like, yeah, I'm home and like, won't you come over to my crib, we can do it what you like, no, you like. Won't you come over to my crib? Know you like it. Know you like it. Know you like it. 
Well, as you can see behind me, I have the engine up on the engine stand, the $51 engine stand because I had a 20% off coupon. And uh, of course, I did for Hover Freight. And the other thing I wanted to say, the transmission bolts stock are a M10 by 1.25. And no store around me sells longer metric bolts. And so I really didn't want to have just that much thread into the block to hold it up. But it turns out to be working decently fine. I tightened it down enough and it seems to be holding itself up. So uh, I guess you can use the stock transmission bolts. Won't you come on to the grip? We can run it, shoot it, run it, boo it, and all listen to it. L L girl, why they always want to trip? Man, these bitches on my stuff and they won't get up by my shit. Hey, L girl, won't you come on to the grip? We can run it, shoot it, run it, boo it, and all listen to it. Hey, L girl, why they always want to trip? Man, these bitches on at me and they won't get up by my shit. We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. the next day as you can see in that last clip I took the front timing case off and I don't know if I made a mistake or not but I kind of consider it uh, I did not take the rear anything off the back of the motor and it is now mounted to the engine stand and I have no idea where I'm going to hook it up to take it off so I can take this back plate off so I can take the crankshaft out but uh, what I'm going to do now is everything but that and one of the things you need to do when doing this is number or uh, put some identification mark 
on your rod caps and your connecting rod and I'll show you what I did here. This is what it tells me to do in the uh, Haynes manual. If you can see right there, I just had a punch and I put a mark there. And this is for the first piston. Then I'm gonna do two marks on this one, right on here, and then lower, and then three, four, five, six, and uh, whatever. So that is what the uh, Haynes manual said to do. So if you don't agree with it, then uh, that is what, I don't know. But uh, I'm gonna do that just so I can keep them, you know, together and I know which side they go on also so that way I will get them both correct and I'm not sure if there's any mark to say what direction they go but uh the thing I can do is it is on the uh driver's side of the motor because when you flip this upside down it sits in like this so I know the marks are on the driver's side so I can Put them together like that because the rods are staying in. I'm just replacing the pistons head, and the piston heads do have arrows on them, so I can put them in the correct direction. And so do the uh, I think these are called the main bearing caps. There's an arrow you can see there, 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 there yada yada. But uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the uh, identifying center punch marks on, and I'm just using a basic center punch. It wasn't sharp enough, so I uh, sharpened it a little bit in my grinder, and uh, now I'm just gonna do this. So what I'm going to do next, and what it says in the manual, you can see there's a file in the cylinder walls. It says use a small file to lightly chamfer the tops of the cylinders to keep the rings from catching when pistons are installed. And it all, I also read earlier, it said do it before you take them out. And I can feel a little tiny lip. So uh, I'm going to barely chamfer the uh, edges with a small file like I have in here see I got one right here and what I'm gonna do is put a little piece of rubber on the tip so I don't accidentally go like that and stab the side of the cylinder wall and then score it and then make it useless
I'm not sure how much of that you saw, but what I had to do is since I had the engine stand with the flywheel and rear main seal still on, the only thing I could figure out how to do, I didn't want to risk hooking the engine hoist up to it and then having it fall or something. So I put it on this flimsy table that I actually stood on top of before to make sure it could hold me. And we were able to put it on the edge where the thing was at very sketchily. So we had to lift it up from the back and the front and slide it over and then unbolt this real quick and then everything came off real nice it was kind of sketchy because i was trying to get the flywheel bolts off and it was tipping but anyways now i can get down to the full tear down since everything is completely off there's nothing holding me back now <clears throat> and one thing i need to do when taking the main caps off let me see if i can find it when taking the main caps off, this is the order you want to loosen them. Must be loosened and removed. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it doesn't matter which side you start on, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4, as long as you start from the outside and work your way in. And then uh, what did it also said with the uh, rod caps right here, it says loosen them a half turn until they are like out so half turn half turn half turn half turn half turn half turn until it's out and then you want to cover the stud that's on the back of the rod with a rub uh, rubber tube or whatever I can't pose that way it doesn't scar the inside of the wall and then make sure you just look at everything and check for play which I already did and there's barely any so that's perfect and my camera's getting low on battery but I'm going to be doing a bunch of boring stuff now so uh, I'm going to put it on the charger and get to work alright so I got five pistons out I wanted to record how I did the last one so uh, here they all are out and I pretty much got it down now so what you want to do is you can rotate the motor pretty easily by hand if not, you can uh, put the harmonic balancer back on or the nut back on and then you can turn it over like that if you can. But what you want to do is get the piston and the very top like that and then get your 14 millimeter. And then the engine stand has caster wheels on the bottom so I have to stand kind of weird. But you want to try to crack it loose. And then on to the other one. There you go. And then you want to turn them a little at a time. They're pretty easy to go finger tight. So now I'm going to use the impact gun. All right, set these to the side. And then a rubber mallet. This one's kind of torn up, but it works pretty well just to loosen this. I tried. Uh, other ways to get it off in this way work the best so you just pretty much whack it whack it until you can get a little crease and then you want to be very careful with two flat heads not to scar anything and you can do this with one, but two makes it easier. You just want to carefully pry up in the corners. Make sure not to do it hard, just nice and soft. Until it pops up. And then you want to carefully pull it off. And uh, if the bearing does not stay on, and, uh, take it off with a magnet or something and put it back in how it was supposed to go. Uh, make sure you chamfer the edges or else it will not come out without heavy force and that's how you mess stuff up. So you want to carefully press it down very easily and then hammer it out and pull it all the way down before pulling it out. And if you look over here you can see my mark for number six. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the mark, see how this isn't marked. So that's not the correct direction. If I turn it around, you can see my mark. That way we can keep the orientation correct. And you want to put that on just so you can get the nuts back on. And then you can see everything like that. 
All right, once you get all the bolts loose enough to where they all are out in the correct way, you can use the same hammer and just softly tap them to get them loose. And then what you want to do is, uh, if yours aren't numbered, which mine are, the first one is actually indented out, and the second, third, fifth, sixth, seventh one, they're all indented in. The first and fourth one actually have the numbers out, which are easier to see. They're all in the correct direction, pointing this way. So you want to remove them. So there's number one. Number two. All right, now once you have them laid out in the correct order, that means that the crankshaft is ready to lift out. I'm not sure how heavy this is, but... So if we look at the inside of the cylinder walls, they are very shiny. And I can barely see some scoring, but I don't think it's bad enough to where I can, yeah, I can't feel that, which is very good. But you can see they're supposed to be matte, and they're shiny all, like you can see the reflection like a mirror. See if you can see my, shoot, okay. Anyway, so we're, this is going to have to get honed for sure. All right, it's the next day now, and uh, I'm going to focus the first half of today on cleaning everything, especially the block, because I want to paint it and make it look all nice. So uh, what I have here is, it's called LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. It is like the cheapest degreaser in my area. You can, I can go to the dollar store and buy it. I think this whole thing was like $2, $2.50. So uh, I am just sprayed it all over the block, and then I'm going to agitate it with a brush just to get everything up, and then I'm going to push it out there and power wash it. If y'all don't have a power washer, then you can just scrub and wipe or take it to a car wash. But uh, that's just gonna what I'm gonna work on now. There's a lot of sludge here. The top is pretty nice on this side. There's just some like rust buildup or some buildup right there. This side's pretty clean except for the front also. And then that little thing is caked. So. Uh, this is just kind of what it looks like right now, and I'm going to clean it and show you all what it looks like afterwards. All right, so after power washing the engine with the zero degree, it turned red. No, just kidding. So uh, I, I cleaned it, I scuffed it, I prepped it and everything, and then I sprayed a, a high heat primer and then high heat paint on it. It's currently drying right now. I wrapped everything with tape as you can see and if you did get some overspray you can just scrub it off of the areas. Uh, this area didn't really need to be sprayed but I did it anyway just to look better. And then uh, I got a little bit on the inside of the oil filter housing but I can get that out. And um, also I just sprayed this side with the primer only. I don't really need to but I just thought it looked better and then I did everything else red. And so I turned the Toyota engine to a Volvo engine. If you get that you're a real one. but. Uh, so I did spray the nuts and bolts, but the only reason why is because I have them threaded in all the way. So the part that is needs to be threaded in without any paint and the threads are good. The nuts don't really matter because they're going to back off and save the threads. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm letting this dry and I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning all the other engine things with the degreaser. I'm going to coat the inside of the engine bay because the subframe and everywhere else is covered with oil. Because uh, this was all nice and clean until I started working on it. And then all that stuff that hasn't been, you know, cleaned in a, probably forever. And all the stuff that I can't really reach. And what I did with the transmission is I put it straight to the uh, mat brake master cylinder. And I made sure to check to make sure that was a very solid thing. And I was like pushing on it. wasn't flexing a lot. So I hooked that up so that way the transmission's off the ground. So I can lower this down uh, and push it out and power wash it so I can clean all this black. Because everywhere where you see that black is supposed to be white and everywhere else is just dirty. There's like just shit everywhere so I need to clean the inside of the engine bay. And then I have all this shit underneath here with all the engine components that I need to clean also. So I'm going to go ahead and, and spray that down and start scrubbing and making all this stuff clean. So I have the oil pan here on top of my paint booth. 
and uh, I just got done cleaning it and as I was power washing it a lot of the paint came off I was gonna repaint it anyways but you can see how it faded off and it's all clean I'm about to spray it and pardon the wind noise but I have some black paint and I also cleaned the inside of it also but uh, here it is you can see some scratch marks looks like it did get dented a little bit let's hope we can avoid that in the future once I lower this thing but uh, other than that I just wanted to show a little before and let me show you an after after I get done painting it and here it is I did get a little bit of drip marks and that uh, solvent pop right there but uh, who cares it's an oil pan it's on the bottom of the car no one will ever see it as long as it looks clean-ish oh let me take these off I wanted to not paint these black that way I could see where they're at and that's kind of cool because that's like for an oil return line if I ever wanted to turbo this thing I don't know if I said that before but I find that pretty cool but I'm gonna let this dry and then move on to the next piece So here's the engine bay, I push it out, and if you get it stuck in park, you see that little thing right there? I had a six millimeter wrench that I pushed it backwards, and that's how I shifted into neutral to push it back. But uh, if you see the engine bay, you see it in the daytime, all that's about to turn white. The motor mount broke, don't need that no more. You see I got the transmission held up by that. So uh, let's hope we can get this thing all white for the second time. Last time we did it was just the head gasket, but now we have the whole motor out so we can get the top of the transmission and more of the lower subframe clean. Featuring a crazy male lady, but uh, here is the finished engine bay. Uh, I couldn't get lots of that stuff off and some of it was into the paint. But you can see I got everything else pretty much clean and I got the rest of the firewall insulation out from behind the brake booster which makes me happy. But here you can see it's clean. She's chilling in her car. And um, oh, I need to clean the radiator. But I'm about to have to push this back in. Went ahead and swept it out. And here is all the engine parts that we cleaned. You can see how nice they all look. They all look really clean. I'm going to have to scrape the gaskets off a lot of them. I didn't really do that. but So I have the car pushed back in, everything clean. And now I went out and bought a glaze breaker, a.k.a. hone. You can see it being used in the cylinder to hone it. My shadow's in the way, my bad. Uh, I prefer the flex ball, the flex hone, the one with all the little balls on it, because it works better. This one works good too, but it has its flaws. And uh, I went ahead and practiced before I recorded it. You can see these four, I don't know how well they're shiny, and then these two are cross hatched. So I was honestly really scared to do this at first, but then I realized it's nothing to be scared of at all as long as you have this. Uh, this was like 30 bucks at O'Reilly's. You can order it way cheaper online, but I wanted it right now, so I went ahead and ordered it right now. And uh, I'm going to show you all you need to do to do this easily. So I have this tilted over to the side for recording purposes and what you want to do is you want to make sure the cylinder is clean. So I use brake parts cleaner right here to uh, just spray it to get any res stuff out, residue, just to have it all nice and clean. So you want to spray that and then after you do that you want to soak it in some type of fluid. I've heard diesel, gas, and then um, motor oil. WD-40 mixed with motor oil, just any type of thing that will lubricate the cylinders. You want to make sure it's nice and wet with it. And then you want to attach your hone. This one's adjustable and I was messing around with it for a while. Let me show you how it works. So uh, I still don't really understand the spring part, but what I did figure out is this is adjustable. You squeeze them in and you can move this black piece 
to get them more spread out and then move them one, over one more and then it really spreads out for a wide cylinder but since mine are small I just need the first one right here which is that and what you want to do is hook it up to your drill like this and let me set this all right now that it's attached like this you want to uh, spray WD-40 on these stones there's different types of stones I've heard they have like light medium and then heavy stones just I, I don't know which ones come in the kit but they are gonna work just fine and you're gonna want to squeeze it and set it to where it's just enough to hold them flat and then you're gonna start spinning and move it up and down you don't want to keep it in one spot or else that'll make the bore uneven so just go with the nice and easy just And if we look into it, you can see it's dirty. So let me go ahead and spray some WD-40 into there and clean it out. So we got it all cleaned out just like that. And now if we look up in there, you can see the hatch. It, it, you want it to look matte with all these lines that is the healthy, that is unhealthy, shiny reflections. You don't want to really be able to see anything clear. But uh, that is how you bore it. You want to hold it for about 20 seconds at most. You don't want to overdo it because then you risk, you know, honing it too much to where it, you almost start to bore it out a little bit. But um, just make sure you keep it nice and moved so it's even. And just want to repeat that for the rest of your engine. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I got the piston rings and I'm measuring the clearance. So if you see, that is the new piston ring and I put one of the old piston rings in to show you. Look at my crusty toes. But um, I'm going to use the feeler gauge and measure the play or I don't know how to explain it, but I'm going to measure the clearance in it real quick. So I found the two clearances and I have to do this one-handed since my girlfriend's eating donuts <laughs> so uh, the clearance for the old one I think that's 45 thousandths point four five millimeters and you can see it goes in slips in and I can move it and then the new one is 30 thousandths you can see it slips in hard I have to kind of press it hard but uh, so you can see that's the amount of clearance so the next thing you actually want to do is clean out these oil I don't know what to call them but clean those out to make sure there's no dirt or anything in there because the first thing that's going to happen when oil flows through it is you're going to go into the main caps and scratch it up and you're going to spin a bearing like all Subarus always do so um, make sure you clean all that make sure it's clean I need to get more brake parts cleaner I just bought this and I already used the whole fucking bottle but uh, or can or whatever so you want to do that and then once you do that you want to you're supposed to plasti gauge I don't have that I don't know where to buy that I could probably look it up online but with everything looking so perfect I'm going to uh, hopefully I'm lucky I got God's God in my hands all right what is up guys it's the next day now and I look like a peacock or a pineapple or something but uh you're gonna have to deal with that and so what I have done now is I went out, I needed more brake parts cleaner, and then I got a piston ring compressor. I hope I got the right size. It like gets way bigger. If not, I can return it and anything. But uh, I went ahead and bored the cylinders one more time. I mean, not bored, honed them one more time just to make sure they were all fine. And if I had a little bit of rust, uh, you want to put oil on there so it doesn't rust. So uh, other than that, I'm trying to think of what to do, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and clean the crankshaft and just start putting everything back together on the bottom end. So uh, I watched a few videos last night and the people were doing it kind of nonchalant, like it was just kind of something they do, like you just do it. So I've been sketched out this whole time, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and put it back together and start doing it. So what I have here is a uh, piston lube. I'm just using it as some type of lube. You can use oil or just WD-40 or something. But you want to make sure there's no contaminants anywhere. And you can see this is the last one, which is different. And you want to put the notch in, line it up.
hold it and then push it down into place and make sure they're all equal like that and then add lube on the other side just make sure everything's nice and lube that way you don't have a dry start when you first try to crank the motor over. Then you want to clean out all the holes in the crankshaft right here and clean this whole area. Make sure you have no lint or any debris in the way that can cause the bearing to stick to it. And what you want to do is get a brush and brush it out. And I already did that, so I'm going to spray some spray parts cleaner through it just to make sure it is all nice and clean. And then I'm going to clean each area in between that sets on a bearing and then once you think everything is correct go ahead and pick up the crankshaft carefully set it in and make sure everything looks correct and now, since you should have them all in order still, if not, they are numbered at the top, or at least mine are. You want to start from the back, take the old bearing out by pushing on it. You can see pushing the bearing out, and you want to clean this. You can see the cross hatching on it looks good, barely. You can't really see with the camera, but replace the bearing and clean it up and set it back down and finger tighten it just so the bolt is through and then we will I will go over the correct uh, torque uh, process and then you want to oil up the bottom of it you can see I put some oil on it make sure it's facing forward with the arrow right there and slowly set it on until the threads go in. All right, well I got all the bolts uh, not tightened all the way down, but just, they're not tight at all. They're just, I just did them by a uh, slight ratchet. And if you look at the torque spec for the main bearing cap bolts, I have a 1992 and it is 75 foot pounds. So 75 foot pounds into inch pounds is 900. And this goes by like 13.33 each time, so I have it right on 4, which is about 905. And that's even if this thing is accurate. I got this from O'Reilly's. So uh, we're going to go ahead and torque this baby down. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be taking the rods off the piston head or the piston head off the rods. And what you need to do that is you have these two little clamps on the inside holding the wrist pin in. So you're going to want to grab that with some needle nose, take it out, and then you want to hammer out the wrist pin. I put a 14 millimeter socket on it and hammered it all the way out. And then there's going to be a little bushing on the inside of the rod. It is what this is. I am not sure how to put this in and mine look fine. So I'm going to go out on a limb and not replace it. But uh, let me go ahead and time lapse this real quick of me taking it apart. I take everything out. I have the bag with the piston head in it. And if I take this out, the arrow faces, faces the front of the engine, which means, and this is on the driver's side, which means it would be going in like this correctly. Arrow and indentations. And then what you're going to want to do is the wrist pin you're going to want to lube it up with some WD-40 or something and I was able to just push mine in with the thumbs and then I'll show you how to easily put in the lock that holds the wrist pin in place. So I'm going to line it up in the way I want it to go in and then I lube up 
my wrist pin. I already put some uh, lube on there. You want to put it in completely straight and then try to massage it in. And there we go. I got to move the rod correctly. And it fits right through. And you want to push it in until you can see the little indentations in the piston head for the thing to go in. And the best way I figured out to do this so what you want to do is oh fuck of course I dropped it so what you want to do is put the one side down in and then hold it in and push it with your other thumb and then it pops right in and you can see it in the indentation back and you want to do it push it down on the other side and do it on this side also and then your piston head is correctly installed and then we got to move on to the rings next all right so the next thing we need to do is put the piston rings on and this is the sixth one so i've gotten used to how to do all the other ones and i can show y'all properly so what you want to do is uh Lay your piston down on the table or wherever you're working on it. The first one you want to put on is the oil, the weird looking one. And uh, all you're going to do, stretch it out. This one's really stretchy, so it's the easiest to put on. I want to, I like putting it straight in the middle. Then you want to take one of the two that you need. And you want to orientate it to the right. So if it's straight up, put it to the right. And so what I like to do is put the bottom in where I need to put it. Like that. And then pull back, line it up on the back. Get it underneath it. And then just kind of follow it down and lift it up from the top also. Now you want to do the same thing with the top one. You want to orientate it in the opposite direction. So if we have the opening at the top, the other one's on this side, and now you want this one to be on the opposite side so they can be far away from each other. And you want to put this one on the top. Then what I want to do is flip the piston completely over to where it sits down, and then take the second one, Mine's labeled second on there, the lower one. And then you want to look for some marking. And the only marking I can see is the part number. And so I'm going to go ahead. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can't see that. And you want that to face upwards. And the way I found easiest is get both corners in like that. And then just feed it around like this, pushing out and down at the same time. And then it should slap right in. I have to push on it a little bit. And then you want to flip it back around. And you want the first ring to line up where you had the weird looking oil ring. And do the same thing with that. Put both in. Push out and down. And voila. And make sure you can spin the rings and they can move freely. And that is how we do it. Let me get some better light. You can see the opening. Make sure they can all spin real easily. And then, yeah, you're done. All right, now what I'm going to show you is how to get the pistons ready and how to put them in the block. So, if you see here, I already have one, two, three, four, and five done. And so now, I have the sixth piston to put in, which I have in the box right now. So let me show you how I did that. So what you need first is um, the piston ring compressor. And this one's kind of tricky to use. You have to like push down and then loosen it quite a bit. So it goes into this, oh my God, my hands are so oily. 
My hands are covered in oil from just lubing everything up because you never have enough lube, if you know what I mean. So actually you can, but uh, not that one. Anyway, so uh, what you want to do is, what I'm going to do first is just put some lube in the piston cylinder wall. Sorry, I'm being kind of fucking all over the place. And then what you want to do is take your piston with the piston rings and take the cap off. I put the caps back on mine, so take the caps off. And then you want to take the old bearings out. Like I said, just push it out. It should come right out. Same on the other side. And then you want to make sure these are all nice and clean. The uh, thing that the new bearings sit in. So clean it out. And then apply some form of lube to it if it's all nice and clean. So take your new bearing and set it in once you have lubed it all lubed up. Move it over a little bit and then push it down like that. There we go. And now the new bearing's in place and put some more lube on top of that just a little bit just to get it all nice and oily. And by the way, this makes everything slip out of your hands. So do the same thing with that. Apply some lube on the end cap. Put a little bit too much, but like I said before, you can't have too much lube when it comes to engine rebuilding. You see I'm dropping everything. And then pop it in place. There we go. And apply some more lube on top. Once it's good, all right, set this to the side. Dry your hands off on a towel or your legs, like me. And then what you want to do is get your piston, put the ring compressor over it. Here's kind of the hard part because I have to torque down on it at the same time while holding it in place. So I want to hold it in my leg like this and then start to tighten this. You want to try to get it as tight as you possibly can. So here we go. Now this is as tight as I can. And you can see the rings are all compressed. And now what you want to do next is go over to the block. Let me see if you can see that. There you go. All right. And make sure there is lube in there. And then what I like to do is I like to make sure that the crankshaft is as far down as possible. So let me make sure the, there we go, what the piston sits onto. Let me go ahead and show you that. See how it's all the way down and not up? That way I have room because I don't want to be hammering and accidentally nick the uh, crankshaft with the rod. So I like to put it as far down as possible. Set the piston in there with the arrow pointing forward. You can see the arrow. Put it forward and then you want to push the piston through just enough to expose the bottom of it so you can get it lined up properly. Slowly set it in there. Get the piston oriented correctly. Make sure the arrow is straight. Push down. You're going to feel the, some resistance as soon as you do. Just slowly hit it with the hammer. And then you want to put uh, the end cap nuts on finger tight until you can't do it anymore. And then if we go over here, the connecting rod cap nut, I have a 1992, so it's 47 foot pounds. And I forgot what that was in inch pounds, but I have it already set on mine. I have it, let me see what I have it, it's like uh, 580 or something I think is what it was. I, I don't count me on that because I've been doing this for a while and I forgot already. So once you get that on, you're just going to want to slowly get it to where it gets tight on both. And then once it's tight, you want to hold it until you hear the... 
don't know if you could hear that or not. Do it again right here. And there you go. All right, it is the next day now, and I went ahead and put most of the front end back on just because my battery on the camera was low and I was just in that mood where I needed to get stuff done. So I put that all back together. There's only a few more things on. end and um, one thing you're going to need when replacing the valve stem seals is this the valve keeper remover and installer kit part number 36050 by Lyle at O'Reilly's and make sure to order 36050 and not 36200 because that's the one I ordered because I didn't know there was a difference and it was way too big to fit on the valve but other than that I'm just going to go over this really briefly so I'm going to show you how to uh, replace the valve stem seals. The first things first, you want to take the uh, camshaft off and then you want to use a magnet to get the lifter off. And in the kit, if you get the valve stem lifter thing, whatever it's called, you can do it like that. And then what you want to do is cover up the retainer and the clip and you want to get a hammer and hammer it on and then you can see it magnetizes the two clips and then what comes out is the spring and you want to make sure you leave the spring put it somewhere to where it stays in the correct direction and then after that you can poke the valve out and pull it out through the bottom just like that and you can check to see if it's warped or not and you can buy a new valve I think they're only like three bucks on uh, Rock Auto or something and then with some needle nose pliers get in there and remove the valve stem seal after that you can take the valve and plug it back in Whenever you try to put the retainer clip back in, it's going to push. So what I do is I get a rag and set it directly under the valve to where the head is like teeter-tottering on it. And then that makes it way easier for whenever I try to put it back in. And uh, let me go back over it. So you see this? Then after that, get the valve stem seal. And I use the needle nose pliers on the outside put it over it, use my thumb to push it down, and then I take the retainer thing and I put it back over it and push it all the way down kind of hard to where it's flush in there. And then, and then you want to take the retainer out and then there's gonna be these two little guys in there, do not lose these. They are very small, and um, I'm not sure how much they cost yet, but I know it is a bitch if you lose them. Fuck. And uh, what you want to do is take this, and you're going to see how this is tapered, kind of. And you're going to put the big end up top and the little end at the bottom. Same with this one. until it looks like that with the clips in. You're gonna take the black piece, put it right there, and then you're gonna move back over to your valve stem, and then you're gonna set your spring back in in the correct orientation you pulled it out of, and then I take it with my fingers and I line it up, 
and this is where the towel at the bottom makes this way easier because what you're going to do now is you're going to take this black piece and put it straight in the center and then you're going to push until you feel or hear a click hear that click and now if we see it is clicked back in place and then you can take your lifter and slowly set it back in there you want it to almost fall by itself you don't want to push it down that much and then you can see it just slowly goes down and then you're good and then I'm going to put this back on do it finger tight and then undo this one and so on and so forth Sorry guys, after I got the valve springs put in, I just kind of threw everything together really quickly and just wanted to get it as far done as I could. And so, like you saw in those other clips, I ended up getting the motor and everything in, except I don't have the valve covers tightened down because I'm still pretty sure my distributor is off from the timing. So I'm gonna have to figure that out so I don't wanna have to keep unbolting it, yada yada. So. Everything is in and connected except for just the top easy parts. But yeah, once that, like I got the springs in, it's just like full force, just like the next, like I spent literally all day on my Saturday night. All my other friends went to this massive meet in Houston. There was like 2,000 people there and I'm watching it on Snapchat, yada yada, but I was just in here, you know, doing that of course. So uh, the battery was fully dead for me trying to start it. I went ahead and... Uh, started it without anything hooked up so I could cycle the oil and that's how I killed the battery because I was doing it for so long because I put oil in there obviously because it was bone dry so now I've had it cycled and the charge starter pack should be charged enough so I'm going to try to start it and you I keep hearing popping out of the intake and I'm pretty sure that's because the uh, spark is not going correctly so we're going to figure that out right now so now that we have it back in time, I removed the distributor, and if you see, there's a hatch here, and a small hatch here, it's kind of hard to see, if I get it up, but I, that lines up, and with it in top dead center, you want to finesse this in there, ever so slightly. And then tighten everything back up and we're going to need to use the timing light. Now with the timing correct, let's see if she'll try to fire up. So once I uh, took the distributor off, I put it up a tooth and then I retarded the timing all the way and I was able to get it to start that's how I did that so and then I'm gonna have to tweak with the ignition gun or the timing gun a little bit to get it to the perfect amount which it says in the manual but other than that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here I'm a little pissed off because I was driving it around the block to make sure it was good and a cop pulled me over right over there and my roads here and they said they're gonna tow the car because it's not tagged and it just pissed me the fuck off. It's like I, I'm in the country for a fucking reason. People drive four-wheelers on the road and shit. And I'm, that's why I'm out here so I can be loud and do the shit. But anyway, other than that, I'm going to end it here. So hopefully y'all found this video helpful. If y'all have any questions, then leave them in the comments. And follow my social. I have my personal one and then the channel one right here. So uh, go ahead, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching and peace.